Hello, my friends. Here we are for the next section of Because of Mr. Terrupt. All right. We are now in the month of October. And October starts with our friend Peter. I never, ever had something in school excite me before, but the plant unit we did with Mr. T had me fired up. We grew these bean plants from seeds, and once they got big enough, we started doing different tests with them. Variables, Mr. T called them. First, we stuffed the plants in boxes with just a little tiny hole in the side, and we waited to see what the plants would do after a few days in the dark. Anna had a meltdown about it, I don't want to put mine in a box, she cried. Mr. T had to take her out into the hall to calm her down. I was kind of shocked. Usually she doesn't say anything. What a weirdo, I thought. It's no wonder she doesn't have any friends. It's a good thing Danielle was her partner. She's the patient kind. Anyone else, anyone else would have been fuming. My partner was Lexi, which was fine, I guess. She let me do what I wanted. Next, we put the plants on their side to see how they would grow. I couldn't believe it. The plants bent and still grew up toward the ceiling. That was pretty cool. But the best part was what we got to do in the end. Mr. T let us feed our plant any, con con any concoction we wanted to, wanted to over the course of a week. There was just one rule. We couldn't use an ingredient that would spoil and stink up the classroom, like milk or something that wasn't good for us to breathe, like gas. There are some pretty wild concoctions. David and Nick used salad dressing because according to them, plants make salad, so the plant will like salad dressing. Brenda and Heather used orange juice mixed with ketchup and Pepto-Bismol. I don't know what they were thinking. Mine was the best though. I brought in cat litter used soda and a little maple syrup. I did my best to mix it together and feed it to my plant. Lexi wasn't real happy about my choice of ingredients. I didn't tell her I had peed in my soda bottle some too. Peter, you moron. This stuff is going to kill our plant, she whined. Shut up. You never cared about the plant before, I said. Well, I like care now, she said. Lexi, maple syrup comes from trees. I drink soda a lot and I'm growing and farmers put animal manure on their fields all the time. So zip it, it's gonna work. Our plant was dead in two days. Danielle and Anna did the best. Danielle used some natural ingredients her grandmother had taught her about. Something the old time farmers really did use, I guess. Danielle lives on a farm, so she has a big advantage. Her concoction worked big time. She and Anna were the only ones to come up with food that the plant liked. Anna was all smiles until Lexi said, like, you're just lucky Danielle was your partner. She did everything. Then Lexi turned to me and added, even if she is fat. I don't think anyone else heard, but I laughed. I know I probably shouldn't have. Anna's smile disappeared and she stared at the floor. Poor old Luke sure tried. I think he put too much brain power in it. He's got a lot of brain power. He's been the smartest kid in school since kindergarten. His partner was Jeffrey, but he never does anything. He just let Luke take charge. Maybe he should have helped. I've brought in a number of different ingredients, Luke said, and they'll interact perfectly because of the electron balance and resulting bond formations. He even said something about a periodic table or some crazy thing. Well, you're never going to believe this, but Luke mixed his junk together and it started smoking. The next thing we know, the stupid fire alarm was going off. The whole school had to go outside and even the fire department showed up. It was great. Mr. T had to do some explaining and after a while we were let back inside but Luke wasn't performing any more experiments for us. Man, things were just so much fun with Mr. T. Next chapter is Luke, and it's still the month of October. We moved from cool math right into wicked science. The only thing I didn't like about our science unit was that we have to have partners. I prefer to do my projects alone, but Mr. Terup teamed us up. We were working with plants, and he said we didn't have enough space for everyone to have their own. 
Jeffrey was my partner, which, believe it or not, worked out great because he let me do whatever I wanted. He didn't care. The only bad part was that he was always grumpy. Dollar word. We studied phototropisms by observing how our plant grew toward the light. We stuffed it in a box that only had a tiny hole inside. Then we studied geotropism by observing how our plant grew toward the ceiling, even after we tipped the plant on its side for a few days. And then we were given the opportunity to study a variable on our own. Mr. Trump told us to manipulate the plant's nourishment. Feed it whatever you want, he said. Make your own concoctions. Jeffrey left me alone. He hated school and everything about it. That day I hurried home and studied my periodic table. I had received a special chemistry, sh chemistry set last Christmas. Hydrogen and oxygen make a special bond when they come together to form water. So I figured I should try to recreate that special bond with whatever molecular, dollar word, ingredients I chose. I looked through the chemicals in my set and picked the ones that would result in the same type of electron balance that occurred in the hydrogen and oxygen bond. I took my ingredients to school and got ready to measure and mix. Jeffrey was slightly interested at this point. Mr. Trupt, on the other hand, appeared a little uneasy about the whole thing, but he never stopped me. Luke, sometimes when you mix chemicals, it can cause a reaction, which then explodes. Dollar word. I know, I said. Maybe we should mix these in the classroom without, maybe we shouldn't mix these in the classroom without knowing what's going to happen, he said. It might not be safe. All these potions came from my chemistry set at home. My mom saw it. It's safe, I said, trying my best to convince Mr. Trupt I didn't tell mom or dad. I didn't tell mom or Mr. Trupt about the few ingredients I got from dad's garage. I knew it would work. Hey, guys, come and look at all the stuff Luke's mixing together, Chris yelled. I felt everyone gather behind me as I began mixing my substances together in a bowl. But before I could feed my plant, something happened. First, the bowl started feeling warmer, then hot. The potion turned dark green, then gray. It started bubbling, first slowly, then rapidly. I knew this was bad. Back up! Everybody back up! Get away from it! Mr. Trapped ordered. Smoke started billowing from my concoction. Then the screech of the fire alarm pounded against my ears. The only thing I heard was Peter laughing. This is awesome! He yelled. Way to go, Lukester! Outside! Everybody outside! Mr. Trupp ordered. I was done for. I was sure of it. Wrong again. Mr. Trupp spoke to Mrs. Williams and took the blame for everything. He even stood up to the fire marshal, who always walked through the building after an unannounced fire alarm. The marshal wanted our dollar word posters taken off the hall walls. He claimed they were a fire hazard. Jeffrey thought this confrontation was a big deal. Did you see Terup say no to that guy? He said. He refused to take our posters down. I saw, I said, and I saw flashbacks of smoke pouring out of the bowl. I knew I wasn't ever going to be a botanist. Dollar word. At least Jeffrey had gotten excited about something. I wish Mr. Trupp hadn't trusted us so much. Maybe it was because he was a first year teacher and didn't know better. But I don't think that was it. I think it was a case of Mr. Trupp being a special teacher. Jeffrey. Luke was trying to feed our plant. I saw the smoke rising. I knew what was going to happen. Terrupt did too, because I saw him go to the windows right away. Not fast enough, though. The alarm still went off. The whole school had to go outside because of Luke. When we came back in, some guy was walking down the hall with our janitors, Mr. Loomis and Mr. Ruddy. Terrupt sent us into the classroom, and he stayed in the hall. I hid by the door to listen. All of it? The man yelled. I want all of it off the walls. He was pointing at our math posters. Mr. Loomis looked at Terrupt. You heard him, he said. I'm not taking them down, Terrupt said. Do you know who this is? Mr. Ruddy said. This is the fire marshal, Terrupt said. I don't care who it is. I'm not taking them down. He looked at the fire marshal and said, you have no idea how hard my kids worked on these. 
He was pointing at our posters. He was pointing at my poster. It had one word on it, stupid. And it wasn't even a dollar word. All of a sudden, I felt bad because I hadn't tried on Tarop's project. There were some more words said, and then the fire marshal left. The poster stayed. I hope he felt stupid. Trupp came back into the room. Peter was off, off. Peter was out of his seat. Mr. T, you just told that guy off? Peter said, dancing around. That was awesome. No, I didn't, Trupp said. Get in your seat. You shouldn't have seen that. But I saw it, and I heard it. Trupp stuck up for us. There's always posters up in the school halls, and they're never fire hazards. I think the fire marshal was just mad about our false alarm, and I think Tarup knew that too. He wasn't going to get pushed around. Our hard work mattered to Tarup, even mine. I owed him now. I had to try, even, even if only a little. All right, and we are going to stop there for today.